Hello and welcome to Simplify TV, the web series and podcast for agencies, marketers, media buyers, and business owners. I'm David McBee. Our guest today is Doug Zarkin, Chief Brand Officer at Good Feet Worldwide. Doug's thinking human approach crafts profit-driving brand narratives across diverse sectors. Co-founder of Gray Advertising's G-Wiz, Doug's career spans Avon's Mark Brand, Victoria's Secret's Pink, Warnico, and Kelwood. As CMO for Pearl Vision, he led a brand transformation with sustained growth. And now as Chief Brand Officer at Goodfeed Holdings, he oversees its global health and wellness portfolio. Doug, welcome to Simplify TV. It's great to be here. And um, thanks for everybody tuning in. As an ex-agency guy, I guess you can say I moved to the dark side of the force, which is the, the client and brand side. But the, the education that I got being a decade in the agency world, absolutely invaluable. I think it's every agency person's secret wish to get poached and just have one one gig like you've got there. So that's that's the way to go, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Well, Doug, I'd like to kick things off today by asking about this human thinking approach that I mentioned in your uh, introduction. What is it and how has it served your clients? Sure. So um, I made the bold decision about a year ago, actually, to write my first and I think only book, Moving Your Brand Out of the Friend Zone. And the premise of that is that to create brand love, to create a intimate, passionate, trusting relationship with your consumer, you really do have to think human. And thinking human really comes down to the essence of imagine how your business would be structured if you treated every customer as if they were your only customer. What would you do? How would you think of customer service? How would you think of marketing? How would you think of promotions? How would you think of incentives? How would you think about the retail experience? That foundation is really something that I've brought, hopefully, to all the businesses that I've had a chance to be a part of, and I think is at the core of really substantiating strong trajectories year over year. You know, I, I remember back in the day when I was selling individual clients and I always uh, would tell them, I'm going to treat you like you're my best friend, right? But you kind of have this concept that you don't want to be in the friend zone with your customers. That seems a little counterintuitive to what everyone on social media is trying to do. Well, think about this. You know, I, I'm married 21 years and, you know, there was a time in my life when I was in the singles in the singles world and maybe had feelings for somebody that weren't necessarily matched by that other person and you get friended and it's the same thing with brands and consumers if you think you have a deeper relationship with your consumer than you do you could find yourself in the friend zone and brands that are in the friend zone have an impossible time in predicting sales they have a very difficult time in creating loyalty they have an even more difficult time in forecasting innovation because they don't have that deep relationship with their consumer and, you know, as an agency executive, you know, or somebody young in your career, what's really critical is, is as you think about the executional part of, of the business, realizing that it's the touchstone that allows you to take that message and put that brand on the brain of the consumer. And if you think about that consumer as somebody you want to go deeper with, it may affect the strategies, it may affect the tools, it may affect the tactics that you want to employ. Are you leveraging any, speaking of tactics, are you leveraging any like data targeting or programmatic media for your clients? Absolutely. But, you know, one thing that's really important, I talk about this in the book, is the fact that, and maybe it's controversial, data doesn't make decisions for the modern day marketer. Marketers make decisions using data. And the real, the really, the reason, it's very simple. Data is only as good as the questions that you ask. And how do you know what questions to ask? You got to get out of the office. You got to get out of the boardroom. You got to get behind these stupid monitors and you got to get into your store. You got to interact with your consumer. You got to watch your brand in three dimensions in real time. And those most important tools, those sales associates, those retail facing individuals that embody your brand, you got to shut up and listen and watch. So much can be gained from that experience. You know, one story that I think of. It's kind of funny as you're talking to one of the few guys that can actually say that he was an Avon lady. You know, when I went to work at Avon, I spent six weeks as an Avon representative going around the country, selling lip gloss door to door, learning the DNA of the business in order to reinvent it 
for a new generation, a younger generation, a more upscale generation, I had to understand the DNA of what existed. And in my current role, I actually went and got trained as an art support specialist in one of our Goodfeet store locations so that I understood the executional part of our business and could help design strategies that allow execution to be even better. You know, strategy without execution is nothing more than words on paper. And marketers way too often like to focus on beautiful PowerPoints, but are they focusing on things that can really move the business? That's our job. That's the exciting part of what we do. That's what my book is about. And hopefully that's what my career has been about. I like that. All right. So a lot of our viewers are agency people and brand marketers, and they, they want to know like how to turn what you're talking about, this getting out of the friend zone, this human thinking, how do you turn that into paid media? So we have to remember that media, while there is a huge data component, it is as much an art as it is a science. You know, predicting if you're doing cinema advertising, what movie is going to be a big hit? Or if you're buying, you know, linear TV, trying to figure out what new sitcom or primetime, you know, series is going to hit. If you're buying streaming, how deep, how granular do you go? What kind of zip code targeting do you do? You know, I'll give you an example. In, in my old life as the CMO of Pearl Vision for 11 years, we used to call it the Nine Mile War. And the Nine Mile War was, we used to believe, and it actually panned out from a data perspective, that somebody was highly unlikely to travel more than nine miles to visit a Pearl Vision. Why? Because nine miles, average speed limit in the, in the suburbs is about 30, 35 miles an hour. That's about 18 to 20 minutes. Who's traveling more than 20 minutes to go see an eye doctor? Unless you live in a very rural part of the country where you don't have them, chances are you have to be humble and realize that your trade area is pretty constricted. And so we really geofenced our stores effectively, and that allowed us to really get that brand out of the friend zone and drive sustained top line growth. Let's uh, let's shift gears here and talk a little bit about attribution. How do you prove return on ad spend to your clients, especially those in the streaming TV space? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, we live in a world of last touch attribution, right? You know, nobody has still been able to prove. Nobody's been able to prove. Still, I should say that TV drive sales. It's anecdotal. Yes, a consumer may say, what drove you in? I saw your ad, but did it? Is the ad just nothing more than one touch point? You know, I think about marketing as a layer cake and something like streaming. When you wake up in the morning, you turn on your radio or your streaming service and you're listening to the news. Maybe you're watching TV while you're in the shower or in the bathroom. Then you get in your car, you get on the subway and you're listening to the radio. Then you get to work, you turn on your computer and you go through all your junk emails. You spend a little time during your downtime, maybe surfing the net, checking social media. All of those things are what I would call contributory factors to driving the action. Marketing's job at its core is to motivate the consumer to do what we want them to do when we want them to do it. The humility in trying to do that is to realize that one single thing doesn't do it. It's the sum of those marginal gains in messaging and frequency. So I think about streaming as a contributory factor. I want to know that my brand is on their brain. I want to know that I'm getting that reach and frequency that's so important, but I'm not counting on a single vehicle to carry the load. It makes it easier that way. It makes it more effective that way. Yeah, I think everyone listening would agree with you 100%, but the real challenge is getting the advertiser to buy into that, especially when digital marketing provides so many, you know, uh, features that show attribution, foot traffic attribution, e-commerce, things like that. How do you have that conversation with the advertiser? Well, I think the, the, the first thing is your job is to try to get that advertiser to not be stuck at the intersection of dumb and stupid. And that is not an easy thing to do. And the easy way to do that is to speak to them on a human level. If you bring them in the journey, you know, nobody likes to say, here's what I do. And so as a consumer, so this is what we should do. But if you can get your client to regurgitate back to you, how do they consume media? You'll start to get them to understand that that consumer, unless they're unique, isn't a one dimensional player. They're watching TV. Maybe they're watching linear TV. Okay. Maybe they're a cord cutter. But then they're listening to the radio, they're on socials. All of those things are contributory factors. And so when you think about it from a marketing perspective, 
when you win the battle of Google and your brand is page one, it doesn't mean that your brand means something. Google doesn't help you to define your brand. What defines your brand is all of the things that you do outside Google. So page search effectiveness is really impacted by qualitative marketing tools like linear TV, like streaming TV. Where you can get really specific though, is in holding your partners to that zip code targeting, that reach and frequency analysis. And if you're a brand with high traffic, yes, they do foot traffic studies, but again, it's a leading indicator. The only true cause and effect that exists is like direct response. You know, if you wanna advertise on, H on, on go on HSN, you can know that your 30 minute segment drove 10,000, you know, pillowcases. Other than that, it's really an art and a science and you can't get caught up in trying to drink too much of your own Kool-Aid by having 90 day attribution windows. Like I love when digital agencies use a 90 day attribution window and claim success. It's like, so you're telling me that anything they did within 90 days of seeing my ad on Yahoo is because of you put that ad there. And they'll say yes. And I'll say, no, you're full of shit. because that's not how consumers behave. You know, take a common sense, pragmatic approach. Don't be dumb, but don't be arrogant. Take the humility of what thinking human is about. Put yourself in the mindset of the consumer and realize that it is the sum of all these parts that allow you to move the business forward. Take one thing out, you'll start to see the impact. Take two things out, you'll see the impact more. When you start stripping back your marketing plan too much, you'll be able to understand what the key levers are that help really drive your business. Doug, I haven't read your book, but I got a feeling that if I had it in my hands and I was reading it, I would just be like, it's just full of common sense. You just, you just speak to people in you know, like plain terms, like this is it. It's a no brainer. Don't be stupid. I like that. I, I appreciate that. What I did in the book is at the end of every chapter, I summarize, I, I was a kid who was raised on cliff notes. You know, if you remember what those are, you and I are probably the same generation. I have cliff notes at the end of every chapter. And at the very end of the book, I have all of the chapter summaries in a chapter because I want to enable somebody to very quickly find something that allows them to feel better about the decisions that they're making. But here's the most gratifying thing to anybody who's watching this. There is no right way to build a marketing plan. There's also no wrong way to build a marketing plan. There's just a way. And pundits, people like myself, your clients, your mentors, they're all going to give you perspectives. Take nuggets from all of them and create your way, create your methodology, find what your thinking human is. That's going to allow you to define your style. It's also going to allow you to define your work. And from there, you can begin to refine your approach and quantify your success and really start to feel better about what you're doing every day. Well, I appreciate all the passion that you uh, that you have shared with us today. That is fantastic stuff. Before I let you go, uh, do you have a podcast or a book that has inspired you that you'd like to share with our audience? That's a fantastic question. Um, I don't have a podcast. I don't have a book, but I have a person. Okay. And um, it's a little bit of a non-traditional for the world of marketing, but Pete Roselle, former commissioner of the NFL invented the Super Bowl. That ability to think beyond what is in the box and realize that what is is what could be inspires me every day. He didn't look at football as a sport. He looked at football as an event and created something that has become the iconic point in every person's life every year when it comes to television. Even to this day in this fragmented media world, Everybody tunes into the Super Bowl, not necessarily just for the game. They come in for the commercials. Doesn't get more visionary than that. So he, his mantra really inspires me every day. It's a lot of stuff I read, but again, I take bits and pieces of inspiration and try to weave them and put them into my blender and figure out how they're going to motivate me to be a better me every day. I love it. All right. Well, uh, tell our viewers what's the best way to reach you or get a hold of your book. So getting a hold of my book easy, just put Doug Zarkin into the search browser in Amazon. It's available in paperback and Kindle. You can go to my website, dougzarkin.com. 
Um, or you can find me on LinkedIn with a last name like Zarkin. There's not very hard and very many people to search through. So I've made it easy for you to connect and I hope you will. And I wish you guys nothing but success. Again, everybody who's watching this has a, a marketing superhero inside of them. You just got to have the courage to put on the cape and fly. Oh, that's a good line. I love that. Well, Doug, thank you so much for being my guest. No problem. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys for watching. Please help us out with a like, a comment, a share, a review. Be sure to follow or subscribe to be informed about new episodes. Simplify TV is sponsored by Simplify, helping you to maximize relevance and multiply results with our leading media buying and workflow solutions. For more information, visit simply.fi. Thanks for watching. I'm David McBee. Be awesome, and we'll see you next time.